driving this car a bit faster on a dual carriageway now and you can feel the power you can feel how quick it is to accelerate it doesn't feel tail happy with a four-wheel drive it's very very stable Today I'm in the BMW M5 competition. This is a brand new car. It had 20 miles on the clock when I took it out. Massive, enormous thank you to BMW Chandler Eastbourne for letting me take this car out and have a drive and show you how it all works and what it all does. If you're after a new or used BMW, please pay them a visit. They're great there, so Chandler's Eastbourne. Let's look at the technology inside this car. So we've got this massive touchscreen in front of us, also with click wheel control. And you might notice that I have an Android phone right now, not plugged in, but we have Android Auto. Wireless Android Auto on the BMW M5 competition and on new BMWs going forwards. This is the first car I've been in with wireless Android Auto. So as you would expect from Android Auto, but what is different is we've got this new widescreen display. BMW have really upped the ante here with the design and they've added this new way of looking at Android Auto. Let's just change it to satellite. So here we are in Android Auto. This is the app screen. I've got my music that I can go into. I can get a full screen view of everything here. Really, really beautiful to look at. Really next level in terms of seeing your entertainment, seeing what's happening, being able to go back. And we got full screen here. And then you notice on the left hand side when it's full screen on the right hand side with the music, the little multimedia player vanishes. If we were to go back to, there we go, you saw it pop back there. If we were to go to Google Maps again, now the player pops up down there again and you can see the time. So the whole screen is being used by Android Auto. Navigate to Chandler's BMW Eastbourne. Navigating to Chandler's Hailsham BMW. This is where I borrowed this car from. If you're after BMW and you're used, please pay them a visit. So you can see uh, Android Auto, wireless, everything that you would expect works here. You can scroll through, you can see the notifications, the notifications. And now when you have navigation, you'll notice down in the bottom left-hand corner, there's now navigation showing as well. And I can go out of here, back to navigation. If I go back to music, then the navigation appears down in the corner. So really, really great. I can have my music and I can still have my navigation. This is, this is you know, a big improvement over Android Auto on smaller screens, having that extra real estate, knowing that you can have your music, you can have your clock, you can see the time and you can see the navigation and it's uh, fantastic. So I can click on the side here to go between the two, navigation back to here again, clock doesn't do anything. So that is wireless Android Auto on the BMW M5 competition and on all BMWs going forwards. We've looked at Android Auto wireless. Now let's go back and look at the main controls for this car. You can see here it's showing the information about what's going on on this home screen and it shows your navigation is with Android Auto and it's showing the music and it's showing that it's connected to my Galaxy Fold 2. I can see my setup, my engine data, my tire data. I can see the values for my mileage and my efficiency. I can see my local traffic situation and I can see the overview of my navigation on there, even though it is on Android Auto, it is actually popping up on the main screen. And I can move this around and edit it. And I can change my widgets here, there we go. So we go on route preview. And now we are done with that, done. We can add another widget here if we want to. So we could go traffic and then done. 
So now on here, I can see my overview of my Android Auto navigation, plus I can also see my music in Android Auto, plus I can see it's connected to my phone, and I can see my local traffic. That's even if I'm not actually inside Android Auto itself. But I can easily go back to Android Auto like this. So that is absolutely awesome. If I tap on the menu button, because I have a click wheel here and buttons down below as well, so I can use a touch screen, but I can also use these click wheels down here. I can now go into this media setting. So media, it gives you the options. So this car has radio, connected music, which will connect to BMW music. We have Spotify, which allows you access to Spotify directly. So even if you don't have a smartphone connected, we have TV in this car. So this is a uh, tune for German TV, because I'm guessing this is preset up in Germany. So uh, we can't watch that, but um, you can watch TV on this car. You got your Bluetooth audio and you can connect your devices. Your screen mirroring with mirror cast, I imagine. And then you've got Android Auto and mobile devices. I see here that it's connected with Android Auto through Wi-Fi wireless not through USB because the USB is grayed out and it's connected through phone calls as well. And I can personalize this menu and change the order where things are in here. We've got an HDMI input as well. So this car has two screens in the back that you would have seen and it has HDMI inputs there. There are also four USB type C connectors on the back there. So it's got a lot of connectivity, this car. And this is wireless at Apple CarPlay as well. I've disconnected it from my phone. You can see it works just like Apple CarPlay would be expected. We've got this massive, great, big display of the apps and your navigation. And it's a different experience, obviously, to what you got with Android Auto, which had the maps and then it had a little widget for your music or your directions. And then, obviously, the time in the corner. This is much more... It's just basically extended it across the length of the screen. And then if you go into something like Spotify, it just extends it across the screen. So there is a different philosophy here with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on these cars. As you can see, but it works and you know, this color, this wallpaper is very bright and very, uh, very easy to see. It looks like a massive iPad or a massive iPhone on your car. There's Apple CarPlay on this massive screen in the M5 competition. And, you know, it's the same on any 5 Series as well. So we've seen Apple CarPlay, we've seen Android Auto. That is how you can connect to your BMW M5 competition or any other 5 Series cars. As a, a tech in a car car, it's extremely teched up. There's no doubt about that. So communications, we can show our contacts from our phone. I can show my telephone. We can show, obviously, BMW Assistant, so you can call them and BMW Messages. And again, you can personalize this menu if you want to. If we go back, we can have a look at navigation. So what's great about this is you can see it's actually showing Android Auto as an option in navigation. So you can click on that to go straight to Android Auto if you want to and it will take you straight back to your navigation on Android Auto. So that is a, again, really nicely integrated. I'm very impressed with this. I can, of course, do my searching through the BMW system, and I can search for shops, airports, restaurants, BMW M service, Chandler's Elsham, which is where I borrowed this car from, so pay them a visit. So we've got that, and if we go into our car settings, we've got our driving information. So we've got our journey data, and this will show your fuel efficiency. So since I got this car, I haven't driven very fast, it's 0.1 miles to where I'm filming this. And you can see here, my fuel efficiency was approximately 6.4 miles per gallon, and I drove an average of uh, 7.9 miles, so um, not very far. My sport displays, engine power in kilowatts, engine torque in newton meters, your pressures for your tires and your oil temperature. Energy flow, so while we're driving, you can see this moving. You can see where the energy is going between the different wheels and between the different axles, which is very cool. 
you got your M menu. So this is where you can configure M1 and M2. So M1 is set up, I set this up a bit earlier, Sport Plus, S3. So this is all in the sportier settings. You can, of course, change it. So you can turn the start stop off or you can leave it on. Probably if you're in a sporty mode and you're using M1 and M2, you don't want to use auto start on off, but you know, it does save you fuel. There's no doubt about that. And it's better for the environment. I can change my C as well. We've got Sports Plus 2, configure M1 and M2. We can do our heads up display so we can configure, is it for the road? Is it for the track? Is it sport? We can configure the brightness, the height, the rotation. So I've already turned it to maximum. We can show whether it shows your infotainment. So it will show me my Android Auto music artwork in the head up display, which is very cool. And we've got our instrument cluster. So the instrument cluster, the virtual dashboard, which I will also show you in a little bit, lets you configure the view. You've got your speed assistant. And again, it will help you make sure you get the right speed. You don't go too fast. It's got the adaptive truth control and you can adjust that as well. This car has all the latest safety features and we'll go into that in a second in our vehicle status. So tire pressure monitor, we've got good tire pressures. Everything's great with that. We've got our engine oil level. So the engine needs to be on for you to see that, but that's the engine oil level. Your messages, no faults in messages and your service requirements. So this is a brand new car in 1,200 miles. It needs to have a running in check from BMW and then engine oil at 19,000 miles. And you can see a brake fluid in 2023, emission inspection in 2023. If we go into our general settings, this is where it allows you to adjust the date and time, the language, the units, the sound. We can go into theater mode and this car has a Bowers and Wilkins upgraded sound system. And we can adjust the balance and the equalizer. We can look at the rear seat entertainment. So there's two screens in the back here, which allow you to see the settings from the front as well in the back. And also, as I mentioned, plug in directly. There's an HDMI input there as well. This is what the touchpad lets you control. Driver, attention, camera. So in the middle here, there's a camera, so it makes sure you're paying attention. So you have pop-ups, which will let you know if the seat settings are changing. You've got your speed warnings, attentiveness alert, and you've got your wireless charging, reminding you to remove your phone from the car when you leave it. Then we've got our exterior lighting. So you can show the number of times your indicator flashes. You can have the daytime running lights on in the rear. You can change the car for whichever side of the road you're on. So the lights are facing the right direction. You've got your welcome goodbye, your door handles, your home lights. On the driver system, we have our front collision warnings set to early side collision warnings in case somebody hits you from the side. Your lane departure warnings with steering intervention. So it will keep you in the lane. Your lane change warning. And again, if you try and change lanes, the little animation there shows you, it will make sure you don't do that. And a give way warning your driving settings, so your speed assistant, your steering assistant, your parking and maneuvering. So we have on this car a 360 camera, which I'll show you in a minute, and you've got the ability to see what's going on in your car with the cameras, and it will warn you, obviously, if you're reversing and you're worried about hitting somebody, or you know, if you're reversing, it will actually brake for you automatically if somebody's coming across and you didn't see them. Park assist, it will let you know when a parking space is located because it will park for you. Your cross traffic alert, again, will make sure that if somebody's coming out of a junction, you know about it and you can adjust the volume. So this has got all the latest safety features and you've got feedback from the wheels with vibrations or with lighting. So back to display settings, we have the various options here. We have our head up display, our instrument cluster, if I go into instrument cluster, I can configure my view. We can have the central display in assisted driving view. I think that's quite handy. So we'll have a look at that in a little bit. Control display. That's the brightness of the display here in the middle as well. Doors and vehicle access. So tailgate, I can open it with foot movement, close with foot movement. We have the digital key here and you can activate the key and you can use your iPhone or your Android phone and you can also use the key card if you have one to get in and out of the car so you don't need a key and with the BMW key you can actually on the iPhone 
allow family members or friends access to your car at specific times and access to certain speeds and features and they will automatically be revoked at that time. So it's a great way of letting somebody drive the car but knowing that they can only can go where you want and basically can't go faster than you want them to. It's raining now so I apologize for any noise. So the BMW digital key is really really great. If we go back now, comfort access, so when I approach it will unlock, when I walk away it will lock automatically and you can turn that on and off. Fold mirrors in when locked, I think that's a great idea, you don't want anybody to damage your car when they're parked close to you. Then you've got your interior lighting, so right now it's in this orange or bronze should I say. If we go to blue, that will now change the lighting in the car to blue, which I like. We have green, or we've got lilac purple like we had in the X6M. Let's go, let's go blue like the channel. And I can adjust the brightness of that. So let's go to maximum brightness and I can see it really clearly now. We've got our Bowers and Wilkins lights as well there underneath. So I can go into that and I can adjust the brightness of the lights in the Bowers and Wilkins speakers. So they will now have these cool effects which is a bit hard to see in the daytime, but that's what that will do there. And it can be dimmed at night for driving. You've got your seat comfort. So again, you can save the positions and these seats are really comfortable. I have to be honest with you, it's very rare that I get into a car and I immediately feel comfortable without really having to do anything. And you can see as I adjust the back here, it's actually showing an animation in here. This is, this is a really comfortable seat, I, you know. I got no complaints there. You can go back here and you can obviously do the seat massages. So I could have my whole body massage. And we can turn it on. And you can adjust what it does, back massage. And you can adjust the massage level. So let's turn it to one. There we go. And I can feel it. It is now giving me a massage, which is very relaxing and it's going down my back and this is just what you need when you're on a long drive so let's turn this off I'm enjoying it but I'm here to educate not to enjoy massages uh, you can do it for the seat for the passenger as well you also have your seat heating distribution, so you can adjust where exactly the heat is on the car seats. Is it on the bottom? Is it on the top of the seat? That's a very cool feature. You can have it so it suits you exactly right. So if you have certain areas, maybe you've got a painful back actually, you can have the massage and the heating on in that particular area. And this is really cool. I've got the color set for blue and you can see on the screen here, the color is blue on the background there. Climate comfort, again, I can adjust the temperature on here. Of course, there are buttons down below, which I will show you. You can adjust the fragrance if there's a cartridge in here. You can adjust whether it's ionizing the air. You can regulate the heat. You can make it so it turns on at a certain time and turns off at a certain time so the car's warm for you when you get in a car on a cold day or maybe cool when you get in a car on a hot day. And you can also adjust whether the buttons on the key open the driver's door or all doors and whether or not the tailgate will open or, and all the doors or not. So that's very cool. Now the driver profile, this would work hand in hand with the digital key and you've got your owner's handbook, which will let you search with pictures and tips and chapters. So this is a really good infotainment system. I, this is, I'm very impressed with the options here. So you've seen all of those main options. You've seen wireless Android Auto. You can see how I've been able to customize the home screen, just like you would expect a touch screen. And I can go into my notifications. I can go into my home phone calls. I can see what's going on with Android Auto. And I can't unfortunately swipe down here when we're in Android Auto. I have to press menu to go back to home. I can adjust my volume. I can change my profile. I can click on the time and I can go into the time settings and I can swipe down for the top here and get into my quick action settings. So really good, really cool. I'm back to Android Auto. So that's an overview of the main entertainment and infotainment system on the BMW M5 competition. This is not 
unique to the M5. Obviously the M settings are, but the rest of it, the way it works, are the same on all the BMW 5 Series cars. And this technology is filtering all over the BMW range. This is the same as in the X6M I looked at. Let's have a look at 360 camera now. So if I tap down here and I press on the parking assistance button, it will bring up for us the 360 camera. I can tap on the site and get a 3D view of the car and move the camera around the car. Which is cool, so I can see exactly where it is from every single position. We also have the reversing assistant which will let me reverse the car without actually having to do it myself because it will remember where I went and automatically reverse itself, which is very cool. I can also tap on the side here and car wash and it will show me where the front tires are on the railing of the car wash. I would probably suggest you don't take a BMW M5 into a car wash. Car washes will probably damage your paintwork, but not all of them, but some of them will. If they're touchless, they might be okay. You can see exactly where the wheels are on the front, so you don't have to worry about curbing your wheels. I'll go back to the 3D view here. The reversing assistance I can tap on, I'm not reversing those, I don't need to use that right now. And then back to the parking view, so you can see the individual cameras, and you can see your wheels, and you can see the back, and you can see the front as well. So awesome cameras technology on here. I love this. This is this is very, very cool. Having so many ways to adjust and change your cameras is an amazing bit of technology. So thank you very much for that BMW. And let's now have a look at the virtual cockpit or the BMW driver's display. You can see assisted driving pops up on there. You can see the speed limit. You can see your tachometer. You can see your revolutions per minute. And we can change this in the settings. So we can change the options here in the car. So I can change the configuration to sport, to track, and I can change the head-up display too. I don't know if you can see the head-up display there, but right now it is showing me directions back to the BMW dealership. It's showing me the assisted driving settings and it's also showing me the speed limit where I am right now. So very cool and I can see that head up display. And if I actually went into my music settings, if I went back to Android Auto and then I changed the album art, you can have it set up so it shows you on there as well that setting. So really cool and awesome to use. Let's have a look at the experience modes. So if we turn the car on, I now have access to experience modes, which let me change the car mood and it will adjust the settings to whatever you want. So it turned on the seat ventilation. I can end the mode, expressive well-being, and it will just change what happens in the car. So again, the fragrance is on, the heating is on. We don't want that because it's a warm day. We've got our caring car settings. Again, I can vitalize it, relax, and it will adjust the settings for you to keep you awake. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more coming from Tech in the Car. Thank you and stay safe.